Hello boys and girls, this is Daniel for Rock the JVM, and in this video I'm going to talk about Aka Streams and a particular feature of Aka Streams that I like to call Jedi Values. So this video is for the Scala programmer who has the very, very, very basic familiarity with Aka Streams, in the sense that you can use some already made components and glue them together and start a stream, but otherwise no knowledge of behind the scenes functionality in Aka Streams is required. If you've never used Aka Streams, I'll give a brief overview in this video. As before, I'll recommend that you code alongside me whenever you need to refer back to the concept of materialized values, so this is the official name of the concept, just refer back to this video. And for your convenience, this video is also available in written form at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog. All right, so I'm back in my code editor where I'm going to share some insights. So Aka Streams is an implementation of what is called reactive streams. This is a specification that allows high throughput and fault tolerant streams of data by simply plugging in streaming components. And Aqua Streams is the implementation of the specification for the JVM. So the components that we can use are sources, sinks, and flows. I'm going to share some code here shortly. So the names are pretty self-explanatory. Sources are producers of data, sinks are consumers of data, and flows are transformations that will transform elements along the way. So let me show you how Aqua Streams works. So for Aqua Streams, we will need an actor system because Aqua Streams components run on top of actors. So I'm going to use an implicit val system as an actor system. The actor system has embedded a, what's called a materializer so that the Aka streams components can have their own life. And uh, I'm going to create some streaming components. So I'm going to create, for example, a source as source, and uh, I'm going to import Aka stream Scala DSL source. So make sure you import the right package over here, and the source can wrap any iterable, any collection. So I'm going to wrap, for example, the range 1 to 1000. So this source is an Aka Streams component that will emit all the elements from 1 to 1000 in succession. So this is a producer of data. Let me implement a flow as flow of int. This needs a type argument. So I'm going to import flow from Aqua Stream Scala DSL. So if you're following along with me, just make sure you import the right package. So the Scala DSL package. And I'm going to use flow of int dot map. And for every element that's going in, I'm going to emit twice that element. So this will mean that whatever element goes into this so-called pipe, so you can imagine a pipe that receives elements on one end and uh, emits twice that element on the other end. And uh, I'm going to also create a sync as sync for each int print line. And I'm going to import sync from the Scala DSL package in just the same way. So the source will emit the elements, flow will transform the elements along the way, and sync will consume the elements. These are the streaming components. Now, how do we plug them together? Where we can say source dot via flow to sync and the result of this expression is what is called a graph. Now this graph is basically the layout of all the pipes that you are going to use to send and receive data but the graph is not alive until you call graph dot run. So whenever you call run, Aqua Streams will actually spin up the available resources so that all these elements can actually flow through this inert graph. So this will actually make the graph come alive. And uh, if I run this application, if I add a main method, for example, I can move this line inside and say graph.run and I should see all the elements 1 to 1000 multiplied by 2 and then printed to the console. So print will actually output to the console all the numbers from 2 to 2000 in steps of 2. So notice we have all these elements printed to the console, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on and so forth. That's because the source emitted the first 1,000, the flow transformed them by doubling them, and all those doubled elements ended up 
into the console. So this is how we can actually spin up a runnable graph and uh, make it run by calling the run method on it. Now, if you take a look at the types of the streaming elements in question, and I'm going to hover over this source, for example, you will see that the source is of type source of type int and this other type not used. If I hover over the flow, we'll have a flow of type int and int and not used. And if I hover over sync, you will see sync of int and then this type future done. Now, the main question that many Aka streams programmers, especially when they start out with Aka streams, might be asking is what on earth are these types? These types are confusing, especially for a newcomer. It's quite understandable if you anticipated a source, for example, this guy to be, for example, a source of int, this flow to be a flow of type int and int, just like a function transforms elements from type A to type B, and the sync should be a sync of type int. But what are these other types? So we have source of int and not used, we have flow of int int and a third type called not used and the sync has a second type called future done so what are these now at this point many aka streams programmers especially when they start out either ignore this extra type and try to focus on what they understand or they try to bash their head against the, the documentation and uh, may or may not understand what's going on because the third type is very very abstract but it doesn't actually have to be that hard and this extra type is actually pretty damn great so let me explain i will name this extra type jedi values Here's the thing, it's one thing to run a stream, plug in some components and you obtain what is called a graph, and then you call the run method like I did here in main, and the graph now has its own life. But what kind of value do you get when you run the graph? Running a graph by calling this method is an expression, much like anything else in Scala. So it must have a type and a value. So what's the value of running a graph? So what's this value that I've defined over here? What's it worth? Now I'm going to call this value a Jedi value for reasons that I hope will become apparent surely or at least by the end of the video. A Jedi value is what you obtain after running a graph. So when I call source via flow to sync, the Jedi value of this, gra this graph is of type not used. So this not used is a dedicated type in Aqua streams, which is a bit like unit and not useful for processing. This is why, I, why it's called not used. Now, here's the thing with these Jedi values. All streaming components in Aqua streams have a Jedi value when plugged into a living, breathing graph. So in this code with the source via flow to sync, I have three components. So the source, the flow and the sync, and thus three Jedi values somewhere. However, the graph itself, this graph can only return one. So then the question becomes, which Jedi value does the graph return? Now, the rule is like this. When you write something like what I've shown here on screen, source via flow to sync, the leftmost Jedi value will be chosen. So the Jedi value of the source, which is not used, will be used here in the graph. So the graph.run call will actually return the Jedi value of the source, which is of type not used. All right, so I hope this makes sense. Now, you can actually combine these Jedi values by calling some special methods. So I'm going to create another graph as source via flow. And I'm going to call another method to mat. Now this to mat function has multiple argument lists. And the first argument is the actual component that I want to plug in, which is the sync, and a combination function of the Jedi values between the Jedi value of this particular component, source via flow, which is the Jedi value of the source, as I said earlier, and the Jedi value of the sync. So you'll have a combination function. Let's call this left Jedi value and right Jedi value. And I'm going to return the right Jedi value. Okay, now this left Jedi value is not used, but I'm going to leave it here for readability. Now, I have this another graph. 
Good. Now, if I try to run this other graph, let's call this another Jedi value, as another graph dot run. Now, in this case, another graph dot run is of type future done, which is the Jedi value of the sync. Now, I will need to import both future from Scala concurrent and this done from Aka streams. So I will have future done as the Jedi value of this other graph. Now I hope you're not laughing too hard at this Jedi value thing. It actually does make sense, so bear with me here. Because after I've returned this another Jedi value, I can actually use this future. This future in particular will tell me when the graph has actually finished running. So I can say, let's move this up top, I can say another Jedi value dot on complete. And I can say arrow, let's call this print line, stream is done. Now I will need an execution context to run this on complete callback because the on complete callback runs on some thread and I will need an execution context to do that. And so I will use the actor systems dispatcher. So I'm going to say import system.dispatcher, which is an execution context. You can think of it as a thread pool. All right, so I'm running this on complete callback and I'm going to print stream is done after this other graph has actually finished running. Now let me comment this out and I'm going to run this application again which will do the very same thing. It will print all these numbers from 2 to 2000 but this future can actually do something when it's complete. So the Jedi value here actually has a very meaningful utility. It can allow us to tell when the stream has actually done. So notice that in this case, the Jedi value has a meaning, which is that the future can be monitored for completion and when you can tell when the stream has finished running. Also notice that this Jedi value has actually no connection whatsoever to the elements being shoved into the stream. So this function that picks the right argument from the two Jedi values over here is called keep.write. For the very common pattern of picking a Jedi value either from the left or to the right of using this to mat or via mat methods in plugging Aqua Streams components. Now, there are various components in Aqua Streams that return various Jedi values. For example, if you want to extract the sum of all the elements that go through a stream, you would construct something like a summing sync as sync.fold and uh, I would pass in some uh, type arguments here, int and int. Much like a fold operator on a collection that starts with a seed, with a zero element, and a combination function that takes the current sum and an incoming element as returning current sum plus incoming element. So this particular sync is a sync that actually exposes another type of Jedi values. The Jedi value exposed by the sync is of type future int. So the int here will actually contain the sum of all the elements that go through it. For example, let's comment this out. And let me create, let's call this a sum future as, and I will need a graph. And I'm going to say source dot to mat and uh, I'm going to pass in the sync the summing sync and I'm going to use this keep dot write function that we saw earlier so when I say keep dot write it means that the graph this source to mat summing sync will actually return the Jedi value of the summing sync which is of type future int and then I need to call run on it so I will return a future int in this case. And not only will I be able to tell when the future is actually done by monitoring the completion of this future, but I can actually inspect its contents. So I'm going to say some future dot for each. Let's call this print line, meaning the sum of all the 1000 elements that I shove 
into this particular stream. So if I rerun this application, I should see the sum of all the 1000 numbers that I've shoved into the stream. Because the summing sync doesn't print anything anymore, it only aggregates the values that are coming into it. And so the uh, 500,500 is the actual sum of all the 1000 numbers that go through the stream. So not only will you know when the future is done, but you will also know what the sum of the elements was. So notice that in this case, we can use the elements in the stream to process them in a single value that the stream will return at the end in the form of a Jedi value. Now, why are these Jedi values great? So Jedi values are pretty awesome because without them, once you start a graph, your pipes are opaque, sealed and irreversible. There's no way of controlling the streams. So once you start, no turning back. There's no way of controlling streams. I'll talk another time about how to shove data into a stream manually or as a reaction to something. Now, there's no getting any information out of the stream without these Jedi values. There's no processing the values aside from flows, and the world will be a very, very dark and opaque place. So various streaming components in Aqua Streams can offer various Jedi values. Syncs in particular usually offer futures in the style of future done or a future containing a meaningful value. So this will often allow you to combine the values inside the streams into one and tell if or when the stream has finished. Some flows offer some control mechanisms like kill switches which allow you to stop the stream at any point. Some sources offer entry points through which you can send the data inside the stream as you wish. I call them Jedi values because they are very powerful. The Aqua Streams library calls them materialized values. That's because when you plug in components together, you have an inert graph, so something like this. But when you call the run method on it, the, gra the graph comes alive or is materialized. So the Jedi value returned by materializing a graph is called a materialized value. The value may or may not be connected to the actual elements that flow through the stream. So this is an important point. So Jedi values may or may not be connected to the actual elements that go through the graph. And materialized values can be of any type, which again may or may not be different from the types of elements flowing through the graph. All right, so I hope this was useful. I'm Daniel, and you can find this article at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog in written form, and you can follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn with the links in the description attached to this video. Now, I'm dying for feedback, so please leave yours in the comments, and if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe, because more videos like this will be coming soon. Until next time, thank you for watching.